Let me read to you a passage from the 8th chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 31 to 42. It's the Gospel for Wednesday of the fifth week of Lent. St. John writes, To the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are ready to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence, and you do, you do what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do the things that Abraham did. As it is, you are determined to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the things that your father does. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and now am here. I have not come on my own, but he sent me. That's from John chapter 8, verses 31 to 42. It speaks to us of truth and freedom. In our Gospel today, our Lord refers to the truth. Aristotle speaks of truth. He says that, and I quote him, to say of what is, that it is, and of what is not, that it is not, is true. This gives, us, this gives a priority to nature over language, culture, or the effects of historical experience. It subordinates signs, whether linguistic or otherwise, to the natural, physical, and finally given presence of what the signs stand for. In biblical commentaries, there has been discussion about the issues, about the uses of truth in classical Greek and a contrast between Greek and Hebraic concepts of truth have been drawn. Some argue that while certain New Testament writers keep to the Hebraic concept, other writers, especially John, achieve a fusion of the two. Well, whatever about that discussion, some things are evident in St. John's inspired presentation of Jesus Christ. Firstly, the truth is absolutely central to our Lord's mission. A Greek philosopher may or may not have chosen to devote his life to, to discovering the truth, but Jesus Christ came into the world to bear witness to it. That is what he, that is what he told the representative of the Roman Empire. For this was I born, and for this did I come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. The truth was far more central to our Lord's life, Semite though he was, than it was to any Greek philosopher. Furthermore, he indicates to Pilate that truth is the most important issue for all, and he, Jesus, is the one who offers it. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. He said to Pilate, John chapter 18, verse 37. This is a statement of great significance for the Hellenic world. The Hellenic world, an outstanding feature of which was the search for, the discovery of, and the insistence on rationality and truth. It set civilization on a course that, at least in theory, prized the truth and sought it in its various forms. Notwithstanding this, Pilate's reply reverberates through the ages. What is truth? Pilate asked. We do not know the spirit with which he put that question to our Lord. 
it may have been cynical, scoffing, somewhat perplexed, or sceptical. Pilate did not wait for a reply from the one who told him that he and only he could give the ultimate reply. Pilate symbolises the ambiguity of man's attitude to the question of the truth up to our own day when the objectivity of truth is denied. In our Gospel today, our Lord makes it clear that man's vocation is to know the truth. In a secular age, the truth has a broad and diffuse meaning. It can mean the object and content of every possible discipline of knowledge. Of course, the truth does embrace all that is and all that therefore can be studied. But Christ makes it clear that the truth is supremely himself and his word. To the Jews who had, who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth. Therefore, knowledge of the truth is not restricted to the philosopher. And in any case, the philosopher may never attain to the truth. Knowledge of the truth is in, in its supreme sense is the gift of the disciple of Jesus Christ. He has come to know the truth in knowing Jesus Christ and accepting his teaching. At the Last Supper, our Lord said to his disciples that he was the way, the truth and the life. You know, during the 1830s in England, a small group of friends from Oxford University, they were Anglican clergymen, made a trip through Ireland. And on one occasion they fell in with a poor Irish boy they started talking religion with him and were much struck by the knowledge of the catechism possessed by that Catholic boy. He could answer practically any question they asked. He had knowledge that was clear, accurate and marked by a spirit of genuine belief. He believed what the church taught as having been revealed by Jesus Christ. He knew the truth that God had revealed. This, our Lord taught, was man's supreme and special vocation to know the truth that has come from God. But our Lord insists on a second feature of this that I'm not sure is found much in, say, Greek philosophy. It is that the truth will make you free. The slavery, sin, of course, is slavery. And to be liberated from sin, one must know the truth. Our Lord tells his audience that you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. Our Lord has come to set us free and this will happen if we accept him who is the truth. Let us understand clearly that what we need most of all is the truth. In this, the Greeks were on to something of great importance, and Hellenic thought has bestowed a great heritage for us all. But Jesus Christ is the answer to this yearning for the truth. He came to reveal the truth, and the one who accepts him and his teaching possesses the fulfillment of what is his fundamental desire. Further, this truth will make us free it will give to us life, life in abundance, and will take us on to holiness and to unending happiness hereafter. Let us then take our stand by Jesus Christ. He is all that we need, all that we hope for, all that we were created for.